Hello and welcome to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. Today we take a little bit of a look at the E3D Tool Changer. But first, roll those credits. Welcome back. So today we look at the beast that is the E3D Tool Changer. So um, this has been talked about by E3D for a good couple of years. There's been multiple designs that have been bantered about, multiple different dimensions and uh, different types of extruders and, and everything else. This is the kit that you can buy from E3D Direct. Um, it's £1,990 if without that, and I think it's 2000, I'll tell you, it's 2,388 pound, including VAT. This particular one is set up with three um, Titans, but they're all set up in a Bowden setup. Um, you can ultimately change out all of these tool heads to suit whatever your needs might be. Uh, the build volume is 300 by 200 by 300. Um, it prints, Amazingly, it's it does some really really nice quality prints. Um, it's another one where it's a, it's very similar to the 3D Gents in so much as it is a wildly over engineered piece of kit for what it is. Um, you can see big big heavy 30 40 uh, extrusions um, to to build the frame. Nice thick acrylic to uh, to stiffen all of that up. Um, really really thick linear rails and everything else and then this works by magnets going over picking up the tool head that it needs does whatever it needs to redocks that tool head and picks up the next one um, it does some amazing quality prints so um, we've got here one of the vases that is done um, these are these holes that are in the top are exactly 1.75 mil Dimensional accuracy on this is astonishingly good. Astonishingly good. Um, to the point as to which, with digital calipers, um, we are getting exactly the same as whatever we put out um, down to a 0 0.01 margin of error, um, which is absolutely amazing. Um, this one is fitted with a Duet Wi-Fi board. You can buy the Duet Ethernet board for it instead. E3D do it in both a 110 and a 240 volt as well. So if our American friends wish to get on board and have a crack, they absolutely can. As I said before, all of these tool heads, they can be changed out to different tool heads if you want. So you can actually, um, you can change these out for lasers. You can change these out for CNC heads so that you can actually change the physical type of tool rather than just as we're using it here. Um, this is just done as a multi-material setup. Um, but this is a genuinely really well built, well thought out machine. Everybody was, well, I say everybody, most people who um, sort of follow some of the sort of the, the newer innovations inside of 3D printing have been waiting for this for quite some time. E3D have been teasing it and teasing it and teasing it, but you can really see why it's taken them as long as they have to get this up and to get this up to a point where they were happy to sell it at a consumer level. It's one of the things I genuinely love about E3D. When you buy their stuff, you know that they have taken the time to make sure that that is exactly as it should be. You pay the extra for it, there's no denying that. But this is made by someone who knows 3D printing inside and out, who understands what consumers need, what when you go above a hobbyist level, what those guys need, when you're getting to start into an industrial level, what those people need, and trying to build a machine that covers off all those pieces. The only reason why everybody shouldn't have one of these is genuinely the price. I would take this over an Ultimaker, over a CraftBot, over a Raise 3D, over pretty much any machine out there. The only machine that I would be interested in more than this is the Railcore 2, and that's just because I love the design of the Railcore 2. Um, but to be fair, this is very, very close to it. Um, it's all auto bed leveling, as uh, you know, as as 
as most of the E3D stuff is and as all machines at this level should be. I cannot stress how much, when you're dealing with 3D printers, how much that bed level matters. I would go as far as to say 80% of the issues that people have with their printers comes down to whether or not their bed is perfectly level. Once your bed is level and is the right and you've got your Z offset correct, after that, once you've got your bed perfectly level, that's when you can start to print really quickly. That's when you can try new materials. That's when you can start trying more challenging designs. That bed level is absolutely key to getting, the, to getting your printer off to the right start. There are plenty of times where you see on a number of the Facebook groups, on a lot of the different forums and things like that, where people are talking about they're having issues with bed adhesion, they're having issues with print quality, and the core of it comes down to bed level. It's a running joke that whenever you post up saying, I've got an issue, one of the first things that most people say is re-level your bed. And it should always be the first thing that people try. And with machines like this, when they put the auto bed level in on that, in on that they, are, they are eliminating one of the biggest issues that most machines have. So, yes, this is, has a price tag that accommodates its wildly over-engineered state, but you are getting genuine parts you are getting a well thought out, well designed machine and you are getting something that you can throw pretty much anything at and it's going to print whatever you need it to. If this can't print it above and beyond, I mean you can put super high temperature nozzles on this. So you can put 400 degree nozzles on this all day and it will churn through everything. The small issue with it is that it isn't obviously enclosed. You would have to build a relatively large enclosure to get this fully enclosed. Um, but past that, I have zero issues with it. Um, it's, it's, it's genuinely a brilliant, a brilliant machine to use. It's a joy to print with, and it's super reliable. So, well done in 3D. Thanks for joining us, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe.